Hi guys, this is Rebecca Matolka with the Department of the Interior. We're here um, at the building with, for Bat Week. We've got a special guest, um, some bats. Can you guys all introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about what's going on today? Sure, thank you. Uh, my name is Jeremy Coleman. I'm the National White Nose Syndrome Coordinator for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And I'm here to talk about bats and uh, celebrate Bat Week in D.C. I'm Rob Myers, I'm the Executive Director of the Organization for Bat Conservation, and uh, I brought uh, this wonderful, beautiful animal. Her name is Camilla, and it's the biggest bat in the entire world, the Malayan flying fox. And uh, we're excited because we get a chance to tell lots of people about how important bats are. Hi, and I'm Andy Walker, I'm the Executive Director of Bat Conservation International, and uh, I second all of that. This is a wonderful way of um, honoring and paying public uh, respect to one of the most magnificent creatures in the world. There are more than 1,300 species of bats and they perform billions and billions of dollars worth of benefits to humans and uh, pest control and regeneration of tropical forests and pollination. And it's wonderful that the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Department of the Interior are doing this this week. Um, someone asked, what's the name of the species again? So this is a Malayan flying fox, uh, Malaya, Malayan from Malaysia, and it is uh, the largest species in the world. It has upwards of a six foot or two meter wingspan. Um, Jeremy was just saying that uh, she looks like she might be a little bit nervous, but you know, bats actually have a really high metabolism, so they breathe really quickly and their heart uh, beats really fast. Right now, her heart is beating around three to 400 beats a minute. Okay, we're getting a lot of questions in, so we'll try to answer them all. One asked, how many species of bats in the world are there? Um, we, the number changes every year because we're still finding bats, but right now it's 1,331. Nearly one-fourth of every mammal species is a bat. And then, how old is Camilla? 21 years old. You know, b bats are interesting because they don't show signs of age, and uh, there's, there's some studies being done into the uh, uh, longevity, but also the anti-aging gene. Um, her silvery colors on her fur have nothing to do with her age. It's all about camouflage. And then um, people wanted to know what the progress on white nose syndrome is and if there's been any sort of um, results on, on finding a solution to it. Sure. Well, the, the, the situation is that the, the disease has continued to spread and is affecting bats now in, in uh, Western or Central North America. Uh, we are making progress on working on uh, treatments and, and hoping to develop uh, multiple tools that could be applied uh, perhaps in combination to uh, reduce the impacts of the disease and, and allow our native bats to, to persist here and, and survive the, the disease. So. Uh, no, no cure yet as such, but uh, we're, we're definitely working hard on it. All right, guys, what's your favorite bat fact you want to share with everybody? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, you know, I think the biggest myth about bats is that they're not really worth anything. And, I, and as Andy kind of alluded to, uh, that, you know, bats are incredibly important, both ecologically and economically to us. Uh, there was a recent study that uh, estimated <clears throat> over a billion dollars annually is saved uh, because of bats eating one type of insect, the corn earworm moth. And corn is such a, a big commodity worldwide. So, I, you know, I think bats, uh, I think a lot of people need to be convinced with their wallet. And uh, economically, bats are incredibly important. Uh, I have two. Uh, the first is uh, people tend to think bats are brown or black. But actually, with all that number of species, there are bats of every color. There are little white bats about the size of ping pong balls that make little tents out of palm leaves. Uh, there are red bats. There are all sorts of colors. Uh, and they're highly adaptable to their environment. And my other uh, favorite fact, which you have to have bats around to really know it, is just how intelligent they are. Mm. It's like, you know, it's like interacting with your cat or your dog when you're dealing with bats. They're not flying mice. They're completely different and just really smart. Yeah, I think that is really interesting that uh, we're finding out more and more how intelligent bats are and also, also socially complex as well, which uh, maybe helps people to identify a little bit better with bats. 
And I'll just add, Andy kind of stole what I was going to say is that the uh, common misconception is that bats are flying mice and that they reproduce in the same ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really important to know that they, they don't have multiple litters a year. They usually have one, uh, if one, uh, pup a year, each female. And so uh, the disease like white nose syndrome or anything that would uh, really impact populations uh, will have long-term lasting effects because they aren't able to bounce back from these kind of perturbations uh, as rodents would. So um, white nose syndrome, the damage that it's caused, will take a very long time to uh, recover from those, those uh, debilitating Im impacts to the populations. Okay, guys, one last question. Can you keep bats as pets? Absolutely not. <laughs> yes. You All right. No, you can't keep them as pets. And you know what? They're really not easy to care for, even in zoos, uh, museums, and other wildlife sanctuaries. You know, uh, it's the high uh, heat, humidity, the nutrition we're still uh, struggling with. Um, bats are not easy to keep. So even if you could, uh, they're not easy to care for. Great, guys. Thank you so much. Bye, Camilla. Thank you. I was just